Just like yesterday, gotta get ready for bed first. This is the book I've been reading in order to talk about it in my video. To be honest, it's all stuff I've heard of before, but this book puts it so succinctly and nicely. Let me read you some of my highlights. How attractive you are is based on your lack of neediness. Your non-neediness is based on how vulnerable you're able to make yourself. And how vulnerable you're able to make yourself is based on how honest you are to yourself and others. And I've heard this one before, but it's not the actual behaviors or words themselves. It's the intentions behind those words. Remember, what you actually say doesn't matter. Why you say it matters. A man with an attractive and interesting lifestyle, a man with high standards for himself and the relationships in his life, will take the time to get to know an attractive woman before soliciting her with gifts. And if he talks to her and discovers that there is little that is interesting about her beyond her looks, then he will lose interest. Ironically, it's these high standards and self-regard that women pick up on and find incredibly sexy. An attractive man expresses his interest unconditionally, expecting nothing in return. True honesty is only possible when it is unconditional, when nothing is expected in return. The willingness to walk away from her and this ability to accept nothing in return is what gives my genuine interest so much value. And I highlighted a lot on setting boundaries. This one's an important one, not just for meeting women, but actually in all relationships. If a beautiful woman says something offensive, a non-needy man will tell her what she just said was offensive. He's merely interested in maintaining his own boundaries while respecting the boundaries of others. Non-neediness means you respect yourself and others. Narcissism means you only respect yourself and neediness means you only respect others. The difference is that if a woman says something offensive, a narcissistic man will berate her and try to get her to change her mind whereas a non-needy man will simply make it clear that he found what she said offensive and will not tolerate it again. How she responds is her choice. Hold your line. Don't go around breaking somebody else's. If you make it clear from the beginning that you are unwilling to put up with games, then not only will the women you attract stop playing games, but you'll stop attracting women who do. For a girl who's been flaky, the author Mark Manson says, let me know when you'd like to get together again. If you're not interested, that's fine too. A couple times they, he's gotten rejected. They said, you're right, I don't want to date you in one form or the other. And other times they've immediately apologized and said that they didn't mean to be flaky. When it comes to making yourself more vulnerable, the first step is often to begin establishing your own boundaries. Learn how to say no to people, particularly women. Start having opinions on what you like and don't like, and what you'll tolerate and won't tolerate. Be honest with yourself, painfully honest, and then be painfully honest with her. Men will often have to spend a lot of time seeking truth within themselves first before they're able to express it to others. And this is an important mindset that I'm just about to read. You are going to be incompatible with most of the women in the world. Our job is not to attract every woman, but to screen for women with a high potential of being attracted to who we really are. So in line with that strategy of filtering out for those who like you for who you really are, Chapter four, the strategy is called polarization. You will get rejected, but don't worry, it's a good thing. Rejection exists for a reason. It's a means to keep people apart who are not good for each other. Ask yourself this, why would you want to be intimate with someone who doesn't appreciate you? The first step to being more attractive is to see rejection as a means to eliminate women who won't make you happy from your life. It's a blessing, not a curse. Now here's where the strategy becomes more concrete. Three categories of women, unreceptive, neutral, and receptive. First, he puts a disclaimer. If you don't find a woman attractive, don't hit on her. Don't ask her out, don't do anything. Again, for the love of God, if you don't find her attractive, don't pursue her. If there's ambiguity as to whether a woman is unreceptive or neutral, you can always say, I think you're cute, slash pretty, slash attractive, slash funny. Want to grab coffee, slash dinner, slash a drink sometime? Problem solved. You'll find out where you are very quickly. If they're receptive, then number one, they initiate with you, or number two, they reciprocate your actions enthusiastically. Most women, especially very beautiful women, even if they're attracted to you, won't initiate with you. They usually expect men to initiate in the beginning. And this is a sad truth, but something to consider. Unfortunately, the vast majority of women you will meet, assuming you're a typical guy, will either be neutral or unreceptive. This is true for the most of the male population, 
the author included, so don't worry. The goal with unreceptive women is to identify them and move on as quickly as possible. Their time sinks. I strongly believe in the idea of fuck yes or no. Unreceptive women simply aren't worth the time or effort to pursue. He also talks about the friend zone, saying, typically if men have been friends with a woman for even a month or two without ever explicitly indicating their sexual interest in her, it's likely too late. You must indicate some sort of sexual interest early on. Otherwise, the longer you wait, the harder it gets and the more likely she will become unreceptive to you. The goal with neutral women is to get them to stop being neutral as soon as possible. If you express your truth and demonstrate not only that you're non-needy, but also frictionless for her, similar interests, values, life situation, etc., then she will become very receptive. One of my favorites for neutral situations, a question is, what's your favorite thing in the world? This question will tell me two things, how passionate and self-aware she is about her own life, and secondly, if we have anything in common. Women who are not passionate or self-aware, I drop very quickly and go meet someone else. Women who share interests with me give me an opportunity to polarize them quickly to being receptive. My success was about expressing my identity, forcing her to make a decision about me, and letting the chips fall where they may. And lastly, for the receptive woman, when you meet a receptive woman, the goal is simple. You escalate, you make a move, you move things forward, assuming you want to, of course. This is an interesting one. Receptive women who are originally neutral, if you do not make a move and become physical with them quickly enough, they will often drift back to neutral and then to unreceptive permanently. Women who are receptive to you to begin with will usually stay receptive almost indefinitely. There's a time window for the originally neutral ones. And this following paragraph that I'm about to read is the basis for the rest of the book. It's an important one. The percentage of women who are receptive to you will increase proportionally to the quality of your lifestyle, your social status, and your looks. The percentage of women you're able to move from neutral to receptive will be proportional to how good your game is or how well you're able to communicate and express yourself with women. And your ability to sort through each type of women and meet as many as possible will be determined by how fearless and bold you are when it comes to meeting women. So if you want to increase women who are receptive to you, work on your lifestyle, your social status, and your looks. If you want to convert more neutral to receptive, then focus on your game, that is in communicating and expressing yourself honestly with women. And to meet as many as possible is determined how fearless and bold you are when it comes to meeting women. It's funny, he says, just because she has a nice ass doesn't mean you want to be with her. Then he says, our primary strategy with women is polarization. The most common strategy by men is to be liked by all and hated by none, but being hated by nobody usually means you're not loved by anybody either. The more polarizing a man is, the more they are flooded with opportunities with women. Polarizing women is more important than being pleasant to them. And then the next chapter is all about rejection. I just started the chapter, but to give you a foreshadow, it's not until you've been rejected a certain amount that you realize how insignificant it actually is. So the rest of the book is talking about how to polarize and all the methods to in increase your lifestyle, looks, social status, all that. This was just a general overview. Tomorrow I'm dropping my dad off at the airport. It's time to say goodbye to him. And I'm meeting some friends for lunch, so. And it is New Year's Eve, but I don't think I'll stay up. <laughs> just like I didn't stay up at New Year's Eve for the past few New Year's Eves, I think. I don't really care or get excited for the countdowns anymore. As my uncle said, I'm the oldest young person he knows. It's been raining so much lately in Toronto that it's been a while since I've gone out for my walk. It's good to get my steps in again. I don't feel like working out as usual, but God damn it, I'm gonna do it. <sighs> I took just under 18 minutes, 45 super arm lateral raises at 9 pounds, and 30 dumbbell curls at 25 pounds each. Mission accomplished. My shoulders are getting stronger. The last time I did 40 reps, and this time I did 45 reps, so that's a big improvement. Let's go in. Let's go in. Come on. Let's go in. Go on.
Anyways, Happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year. Here's to a good 2024. 1% better every day, baby.